Hey, Mike, do you love subscription boxes as much as I do? Probably more than you do. Guess what? You're going to be absolutely obsessed then with Meet Cute Box. Meet Cute Box is a membership box for couples that give you a new theme date night box each month for you and your partner to enjoy. My favorite part about Meet Cute Box is the fact that all the items are from small local businesses around the world. So you really get to experience something new and different every month. Memberships start at only $29.99 per month with each box valued up to $100. If you're looking for ways to keep date nights fun and exciting, as a newlywed like you, Mike, that's right. You can try Meet Cute Box completely risk free by checking meatbox.com and use the code SUMMER20 to get 20% off your first order. But hurry, the offer expires at the end of June. So visit meetcutebox.com and use the code SUMMER20 at checkout. Couples memberships are $39.99 or single memberships for that single friend, $29.99 every month. Make sure to sign up today. You can receive your box as early as next week. Broadcasting across the nation from the East Coast to the West, keeping you up to date on technology while enjoying a little whiskey on the side with leading edge topics along with special guests to navigate technology in a segmented stylized radio program. The information that will make you go, hmm. Pull up a seat, raise a glass with our hosts as we spend the next hour talking about technology for the common person. Welcome to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum, the show that makes you go, hmm, technology news of the week. The show for the everyday person talking about technology, broadcasting across the nation with insightful segments on subjects weeks ahead of the mainstream media. We welcome our radio audience of 35 million listeners to an hour of insightful technology with a little whiskey on the side. I'm Nathan Mum. Welcome to our show today. We live stream during our show on five of the most popular platforms, including YouTube, Twitch.tv, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We encourage you to watch us live or visit us at TechTimeRadio.com or even tweet us during the show at hashtag TechTimeRadio, and we'll do our best to respond to you on the air I'm your host of the technologist with over 30 years of expertise working for companies like Microsoft and Vulcan Inc. and a keynote speaker on technology subjects from cybersecurity to blockchain and everything in between. My co-host here, Mike Gorday, is an award-winning author. Originally from Arizona, Mike is a human behavior expert living in the Seattle area with a master's degree in forensic psychology with a 20-plus year career helping others understand human behavior. Mike keeps me from geeking out while providing an insight into human behavior and how it interacts with technology. We are two friends from different backgrounds, but bring the best technology show possible every week for our family, friends, and fans to enjoy. Welcome, everybody, to the show. Boy, we got a packed show today, don't we? We we have a packed show every day. We do. (laughs) So we are going to get right to it here, Odie. Let's start today's show. Now on... Today's show. All right. On today's show, do we have a possible cure for cancer? And what is the news of this plastic eating enzyme that can eliminate billions of landfilled waste? Well, we have James Riddle, our tech time expert on the show, to give us some answers to, to these techno- technology breakthroughs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Technological breakthroughs? Uh, technological breakthroughs. <laughs> Next, we have a great big nugget of the week with Nathan Nugget. And we're going to be talking all about Windows keys. So there's some interesting things on these Windows keys. We actually had a little production meeting last night. I think, Mr. Gorday, you learned a couple new ones, didn't you? Yeah. You like one, don't you? The boss key. Yeah, we'll be talking about that, of course. <laughs> and, and then nothing brings us more together than Meta. And it's been accused again of stealing technology from another corporation. Oh, man. No, not again. Oh, oh I'm, sure, I'm sure that they didn't do anything. I'm sure that they're honest and and innocent in that. We'll find out more about that. And the Milky Way. Um, do we have extraterrestrial life living uh, bound us? You know, there's some interesting facts on that. So I'm excited about that. And the DeLorean offers a first look at the guild winged Alpha 5 EV rival. A time machine is not included in the price, but DeLorean has released a brand new car. And I am so excited about that. As a matter of fact, I watched Back to the Future Last just, night. Just so you could live some oh, nostalgia moments? Yeah, you know what? what? Somebody may have uh, gone on a pre-order for that, but we're not going to say who. So, okay. <laughs> so I don't then, think we need to say who. All right. In addition, we have our standard. it wasn't me. Uh, it wasn't you. <laughs> uh, including This Week in Technology, Mike's Mesmerizing Moment. And today you're going to open up a cute 
Uh, Meet Cute Box, one of our new sponsors. Uh, we're going to yeah, do a I boxing unveil during uh, your uh, Mike's mesmerizing moment. That'll be exciting to take really? a look at. Yeah, uh-huh. that's my mesmerizing moment. Well, maybe. And we have our pick of the day, our whiskey tasting. So sit back, raise a glass, and welcome to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Now it's time to start our show with our loaded question of the week. Brought to you by Elderberry Boost. Get your Elderberry Boost today at elderberry-boost.com. Mike and Odie, here's your loaded question. If you could only eat three foods the rest of your life, what would they be? Lobster, steak, and spaghetti. Lobster, steak, and spaghetti. I like that. Those are pretty good. Odie? Ooh, um, popcorn, grapes, and cornflakes. Cornflakes. Really? Yeah. yeah. Cornflakes. Yeah, cornflakes, like cere- like the cereal. Yeah. I know what cornflakes are. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that would be- I have some interesting thing. factoids about about that? flakes, but uh, I'm not going to talk about okay. it on the radio. All right. My three things would be steak, shrimp, and what would be my third? You know what? How about drinking? I'm going to have a gin and no, tonic. No, no, no. no, no it has eating. to be food. Um, so, you know what? I'd probably do crab, not lobster. I'd change it to crab. Dungeness okay. crab specifically. Okay. All right. there. That was brought to you by Elder... Berry Boost. Visit elderberry-boost.com for our loaded question and more information about how to help your immune system. All right. Now, we're excited about Mike's unboxing of the meetcutebox.com. Make sure you stay all the way through to the end of the show so you can see that in Mike's mesmerizing moment. We're going to see what is in that box. I got one of those boxes today. I already opened mine at home. And you know what? It's pretty pretty interesting. You can listen to their commercial, the next commercial after, and the next commercial is going to have Meet Cute Box about there, so you can sign up this month for 20% off. So there you go. And, as always, we have our whiskey tasting here in the commercials. See if our selected whiskey pick of the day gets zero, one, or two thumbs up by the end of the show. You want to make sure you listen all the way through to pick up a few interesting facts on Mark's Mumbles that will make you go, mmm, with the whiskey facts of the week. Now it's time to start with the latest headlines in the world of technology. What's happening in the world of technology? This is our top stories in the first five minutes. All right. As we talked about, Meta Platform copied VR technology key to Meta versus gaming, uh, the company uh, Emerson Corp claims. So they say that they essentially, Meta has used its uh, feedback process in the VR lenses and in the VR unit for the Quest 2 and essentially violated copyright laws. Mm -hmm. They are... Uh, going to file a complaint they did last week in Waco, Texas. They're saying essentially the haptics allows users the experience of the vibration of the real life forces that you get, like punching in a virtual boxing game, were already a part of their IP intellectual property. Right. In uh, already publicized and out there in the market. And essentially, Meta decided to take all of their work, incorporate it into their Meta Quest 2. That was released out there. So we will see. Now, uh, you know what? Meta uh, was asked about this and representatives did not have a comment and have not said anything regarding this suit. Does that surprise you? No. All right. There you go. And you know what? I had to take the bashing of the Meta. We talked about that so that you didn't have to bash on them again. As as That seems to be kind of your thing that you always get to do. I always bash on Meta? Yeah, you kind of do. So (laughs) so now I did it. So now we're equal opportunity bashers. equal opportunity bashers. Well, if they would quit doing stuff that was hinky, maybe maybe I wouldn't bash on them. (laughs) There you go. All right. Story number two, Mike. All right. Well, I have good news and bad news in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Okay, well, what's that? So some re- some researchers from Beijing Normal University in China have used a new research data collected over the past 50 years to come up with an estimate of the number of alien civilizations out there in the universe using a mathematical simulation model called the Monte Carlo simulation. Okay. This simulation system has an element of chance being a core process, hence the name. Okay. Uh, the model is being in use is being used in lieu of other older statistical simulation models, such as the Drake equation, named after astronomer Frank Drake, because there are so many uncertainties in these older models that they make plausible predictions incredibly difficult. The Drake equation goes back to the 60s and takes into account factors such as average rate of star formation, those fractions of stars that may have planetary systems, and those fractions of planetary systems that could host life and so forth. Perfect. This newer model is using data that we have acquired since then, such as the probability of planets forming in the habitable zone, the probability of life emerging and evolving on those planets, and, crucially, time scales 
involved for an alien species to survive long enough to discover and generate uh, signals or the ability to communicate. Okay. The model has given the researchers good news and bad news. All right. Well, what's the, what's the good news? So the good news is that they have predicted alien civilizations that are intelligent and can communicate at a whopping 42,777, give or take a few hundred. Okay. Okay. Uh, given this predicted simulation, yep. uh, these civilizations would need to survive at least 2,000 years on average to communicate with us. Of course, uh, we humans have been around for a lot longer, so it looks like we have a little bit of a, a larger learning curve. Okay. Uh, while it's not the answer to life, the universe, or everything, it gives some hope that these uh, that there are those out there that we can communicate with at some point. Perfect. Now, the bad news Uh-oh. is that this same system... Uh, gave a result that's based on more pessimistic predictors. And okay. that means that there could be as few as 111 SETIs, SETI being uh, communication, communication-driven communication intellectual extraterrestrials, right? Okay. So uh, it could be a, as few as 111 out there in the billions of stars in the universe. Uh, this simulation suggests that these simu- civilizations would need to survive for nearly one million years on average in order to communicate with us. All right. Uh, this one puts us ahead of the curve. Okay, so we're ahead of that curve. Yeah, we're, ahead that, we're ahead of that curve. Okay. Because we've been around. We've been around for about two hundred fifty thousand. years. What about the planet Vulcan, though? Uh, yeah, no. No? no. 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 We're not. We're not talking about. What, how about Tatooine? We're not talking about that. The, the, That's the, in a galaxy far away. Oh, okay. Either way. Yeah. Either way. No, those the have reason. to exist. The, the, I mean, it's, Vulcan has to exist. Otherwise, Spock doesn't exist. Okay. Okay. All right, whatever. Okay. Either way, the researchers say that this may shed some light on the Fermi paradox. You are familiar with that? I am. Uh, that is the paradox about which asks why humans have not received any signals from alien civilizations despite the estimates for their existence. So the study reads that the reason why we have not received a signal may be that the communication lifetime of humans is not long enough at present. However, it has been proposed that the lifetime lifetime of civilization is very likely self-limiting due to many potential disruptions, such as population issues, nuclear annihilation, sudden climate change, rogue comets, ecological changes, and etc. So while this is interesting... It might be more plausible that an intelligent race is sophisticated enough to contact us may not want to. <laughs> they may not want to? Yeah, because- but they're uh, going to have Elon Musk's car that's you know going to bang into them. That's just going to come right into yeah. their atmosphere. Well, right? Have you, have you seen how nutty human beings are? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that that may be. That may that be may, the reason? That, I think that should be, uh, that should be one of the uh, factors of why we haven't been contacted by you aliens. You got a bumper sticker. There's no which aliens out the, there because we're nutty. Why, to answer your earlier question, which is why the Vulcans haven't deigned to uh, talk to us yet, because uh, you know we're, we're not at their level if, yet. If you're gonna if you're gonna be chatting about that in light of it being sort of real, we have to you know get to a point where we have uh, faster than light travel. Uh, you know, Stranger Things. Uh, you know, that's yeah, have that's you seen a, it? That's a show. Yeah, no, oh, <laughs> that's not true. Okay, all right. Here we go. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I wonder if you're not the reason why aliens don't contact. Uh, is that okay? All right, here we go. Let's start <laughs> okay. with uh, story number three next. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides. The stainless steel construction made the flux dispersal. Look out! All right. Why, why, did your, why does your story get theme music? Well, <laughs> What's that see. about? Let me tell you. The DeLorean offered his first look at the gold-winged Alpha 5 electric vehicle. Time machine not included. The DeLorean Motor Company has revealed the first images of the Alpha 5 electric vehicle, the brand's attempt to resurrect the DeLorean name in all of its glory. Staying true to the classic 80s DeLorean known for its appearance in Back to the Future, the Alpha 5 comes with the iconic gold wing doors and can reach 60 miles per hour in 2.9 seconds. But that doesn't make any well, difference. They need, to, they need to do one with Mr. Fusion. Well, because 88 miles per hour has been clocked at 4.35 seconds. That's the most important. Well, yeah, it's an EV. Uh, the Alpha yeah, 5 
comes with a 100 kWh battery offering an estimated 30 miles of range <laughs> and a top speed of 155 miles per hour. That should be 1.2 1. <laughs> 1. gigahertz. gigahertz. Gigawatts. Uh, gigawatts. All right. The DeLorean estimated the specs will belong to the base performance model, and there's no word yet on their possibility of a performance, tiers, or pricing. While the Alpha 5 does hint at a heritage of its gas-powered predecessor, the gold wing doors and a slope design triggers the new area of having four seats instead of two. Despite the obvious, the Volkswagen-owned design team that helped develop the look of the 1981 DMC-12 is back to help contribute to the Alpha 5. So you're saying that this doesn't look like the old DeLorean? It does not. Well, what the heck? Well, but it looks close enough. It looks close enough. And, and you know I what? don't know. I, I don't I don't know if I buy that. Well, I don't it needs to have, you know, it looks pretty good. Be able to attain 1.21 gigawatts. So it is and it's got to have a little flux capacitor it's in the back. Be, and it's got to be stainless steel. Stainless steel. I don't think yeah, okay. All right. Mike our time's up. Now you're making me feel bad. We got through the top stories of the week. If you <laughs> want to learn more for having theme music <laughs> about this, please visit us online at techtimeradio.com and click on the episode section or blog to get more details of these stories and features. Now it's time to get ready for our whiskey tasting during our break. But up next, we have our Ask the Expert, James Riddle from Research Services and Strategic Consulting from Advera with the question, do we have a possible cure for cancer? And what is this news of a plastic-eating enzyme that can eliminate billions of landfill waste? We're still going to take a look at the unboxing of Mike's Meat Cute Box coming on up. That, that is going to hold us over till the end of the show. We're excited about that, so hang on. We'll be back in a moment. You're listening to Tech Time Radio with Nathan Mum. Hey, Mike. What? Have you heard of Elderberry? Only in reference to a Monty Python movie. Well, let me tell you, Elderberry Boost. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Yes, Mike, that's Elderberry Boost. You can choose Organic Elderberry Boost, that 8-ounce size. that's available on sale right now at eleven ninety nine. But you're listening here right now on Tech Time Radio, so you need to go to Elderberry. That's E-L-D-E-R-B-E-R-R-Y-Boost.com and get some today. Elderberry Boost. Elderberry is an all-natural organic immune system booster and antiviral. Elderberry is known to actively fight against viruses, including colds and the flu. It also works as a natural remedy for allergies, cancer, digestion, heart disease, high cholesterol, headache, toothache, weight loss, and reduced inflammation. It's a natural and healthy diuretic and has many antiviral properties. While it is famous for fighting the flu, it is effective for any illness. Elderberry Boost was created to provide a quality organic elderberry to their customers. After searching years ago for a perfect elderberry syrup, none could be found, so they essentially created their own homemade recipe. If you would like to get 15% off your first order of Elderberry Boost, just put in the discount code TECHTIME at checkout. Again, that's elderberry-boost.com. Elderberry Boost. Hey, Mike. Yeah, what's up? Hey, what would you recommend for someone that's looking to launch their career in coding? Treehouse, man. Treehouse has one of the best and most affordable online classrooms for you. At Treehouse, they've rethought the learning process and built a proven system to get you the skills and knowledge you need to achieve your goals. That's awesome. When you're done with a course, you haven't just watched a video. You've learned, practiced, and absorbed the concept or choose to build your portfolio. Create a network and land your dream job with their boot camp style tech degree program. Land a dev job this year. Okay. Whatever your goal, we'll get you there. Get 50% off your first month as a podcast listener. It's teamtreehouse.com forward slash sign up underscore code. That's sign up underscore code forward slash Podcorn Courses. Sign up today with our special Tech Time Radio code. Now listen carefully. It's teamtreehouse.com forward slash sign up underscore code. That's sign up underscore code forward slash Podcorn Courses. That's awesome. Sign up today. Welcome back to Tech Time with Nathan Mum. Tech Time Radio is a weekly hour technology show to talk about current technology in a simple format without having to geek out. Brought to you by myself, Nathan Mum, and Mike Roday. We just had a first whiskey tasting during the break. And now let me tell you about what we're sipping for our pick of the day during the show today. We have chosen the Four Roses Single Barrel Bourbon, a 100 proof. 
forty nine ninety five. Now let me tell you a little bit about this. This is uh, uh, produced by Karen Brewery Company. It's a Japan based company. Uh, the distillation is the Four Roses Distillery in Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, USA. Its classification is straight bourbon. It has a hint of delight ripe fruit, peaches, plums, and cherries with a subtle hint of honey, brown sugar, and light oak. It's very complex, full body spice, and surprisingly smooth taste. Comes with a creamy delight, long finish that's unbelievably mellow. By some accounts, the Four Roses brand was founded by Rufus Matheson Rose and was probably named in honor of him, his brother, Oregon. And two sons, however, have several different stories that have been told about the name's origin. Jones asked Mary to respond to his final marriage proposal during this process and decided to have the four red roses as a part of their wine tasting celebration. This time she accepted and entered the ballroom wearing the corsage. So there you go. That's a little bit about our four roses. Yeah, if it's Japanese, it would be pronounced Kirun. Kirun? Okay, well, Kirin. Kirin, Kirun. Kirun. All right, there we go. So that's, so far, what did you think of the taste, Mike? Oh, it's a good taste. A little Uh, bit of a burn, but good taste. It has, you know what, these these high-end whiskeys that uh, Mark's been sending us is uh, much different than the uh, low bro shelf that uh, I get my uh, whiskeys at. That you out on your... Wines and Wars uh, Adventures, it is, yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you like these a little better? Much. Uh, they're no I, Canadian I'm almost mists. willing to give these thumbs up just because they're not Canadian from, mist-like. From, from your <laughs> travels. All right, okay. Well, now that we got the whiskey out of the way, we have our main segment, Ask the Espert, with the James Riddle. And we have two stories that are breaking that we're going to talk to him about. Let's get ready to start this episode. Welcome to the segment we call Ask the Experts with our Tech Time Radio expert, James Riddle. As we welcome James Riddle to the show, James, welcome back. We enjoy you on our show each and every time we have you. We always ask you great questions. Still one of my Jurassic Park questions. I still have that as one of my favorite uh Topics to listen back into. So if you want to go back and listen to that. Why don't you ask him about Spock well, and Vulcan? Vulcan? Well, of course there has to be a Spock, right? James is going to say that there's got to be a Spock out there, right? If 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 we want to hold true to the Star Trek, there's got to be a Spock out there somewhere. And I'll, and I'll bet that the Vulcans perfected the mRNA technology before we will. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. Look how he Thanks, plugs James. that. Appreciate that's, that. That's right. Perfect. Needed uh, some help there, but. <laughs> all right. Promising cancer vaccines in the work, utilizing similar mRNA technology that combated COVID-19. The COVID-19 vaccination technology just didn't fight the virus. It has now been turned to fight and combat cancer. Researchers find potential in a cancer vaccine based on the same messenger RNA or mRNA, a technology used by COVID-19 vaccinations to combat a type of breast cancer that's overexposed as a protein called HER2. HER2 negative? Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know about that. So, so, James, this sounds exciting that cancer is considered the biggest killer in the world. Uh, we may have something to combat it. So first of all, tell me a little bit about what this cancer is on HER2. Yeah, so so the article's talking about HER2 positive. Okay. Uh, so it's it's the human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, HER2. Uh, and basically what it is, is it, it's, a, it's an abnormality in your breast cancer cells uh, that produces a lot more uh, stuff than it's used to. That's the oversimplification uh, of it. And if you have uh, HER2 positive, what happens is that some of the cells in your breast will reproduce at an unpredicted and unnatural rate, uh, which then leads to tumors and cancer and, and, and the like. And a lot of cancer is uh, derived that way. It's a genetic uh, di- abnormality or an abnormality in your cell. Uh, that causes the cell to either reproduce at an unexpected rate, which is what creates a tumor, uh, or it's abnormally mutated so that uh, it doesn't uh, get killed off in the body by your immune system and the like. And so cancer treatments for a long time have been trying to figure out how do I make this HER2 positive uh, situation not behave the way that it's go- that it uh, her two positive cells would do, and that way you can try and combat the creation of the tumor can the tumor cells within inside the breast. And a lot of cancers have that same type of characteristic where if you figure out how to turn them off, you can defeat them. Okay, so let, so let's go back for people that don't know what 
RNA is or mRNA. Can you kind of explain what that technology is? We've talked about it at least three or four times on the show, but let, let's kind of get a recap of, of how that whole process works. Yeah. So, so inside your, your body is made up of a whole bunch of cells. I think everybody learns that in like high school biology class. The inside your cells, it's like a little factory, right? And there's different bits and pieces inside your cell and it's reading your DNA and different pieces with inside your cell will read the DNA and decide to do certain things like produce HER2 uh, positive uh, spikes or COVID spike proteins, or they, they, they do all kinds of stuff inside your cell. Well, if the process inside the cell breaks down or it doesn't know exactly what to do, uh, you know, you can have problems. You can have things like body doesn't know what COVID is and because it's never seen COVID before, or it has things like the HER2 positive where it produces more of the proteins than it's supposed to. And so you can use the messenger RNA technology to essentially deliver a message to the cell. It's where the messenger part of it comes from. You deliver a message to the cell to tell it to do a certain thing. And we've been able to, as humans, figure out how do we tell our cells to do certain things? Now, we can't do everything that way, uh, but the messenger RNA technology has been able to allow us to do things like, I think I'd like to tell my cells to produce a, uh, the spike protein to imitate COVID so that my immune system learns what COVID is. And then when actually COVID comes around, hopefully it'll attack the COVID and you won't get as sick as you would have otherwise. Um, and so same, similar concept in cancer treatments, we can use the messenger RNA technology to tell the cancer cells or other cells in the body to either turn off being cancer or uh, produce a particular protein on the cell that will enable your immune system to go attack it. Uh, you can read about CAR T cells and killer T cells. All of those types of technologies use that same type of let's tell our body to do something and allow your body to cure itself or protect itself rather than using a chemical or some other kind of uh, synthetic compound like a drug uh, in order to produce a cure or produce or, or radiation. Yeah. So now that's so yeah, or radiation. Yeah. So has this actually been tested and, and proven to be successful now? Is that, is that, is it still in the uh, infancy stages or do we actually have some proof positive that this is working? Uh, test tested. Yes. Uh, proven not yet. Okay. Uh, but definitely the mRNA technology, uh, as we've seen with the COVID vaccines, uh, is you know, it's it's something we know how to use now, and we've used it on a lot of you know billions of people, maybe millions. Billions might be too much, um, but you know we've used it on a lot of folks. mRNA actually has been around; that technology has been around for a while. It just wasn't until COVID where we really utilized it on a grand scale, and now folks are really accelerating utilizing mRNA to do certain reactions in the body, like breast cancer with the HER2 positive or any other kind of condition where you can tell your cells to do a certain thing and that will help either cure or protect you in a certain way, like yeah. vaccines, treatments, et cetera. There, the proliferation and the number of research studies using mRNA technology is just amazing. I've never seen this level of adoption uh, as rapidly in uh, in my twenty some odd years of working in clinical research, that's nice. Yeah. So, now, now we want to have the R the mRNA tell me my body needs to get up in the morning. Get you in the like, morning. Yeah. So, so I did have COVID. I had COVID with about a month ago. Now was it about a month? Yeah, you had you had pretty mild, and case. I had a pretty mild. So I don't know if it was. I I had three vaccination shots, and so when I got it, it was just like a one day maybe tops of a two days type of deal. And then I was back ready to go. Although I had to wait until I was testing negative on the test to go back to work, but it really hit me as very light. And I know, I don't know if that's because of this technology that you're talking about, James, that helped well, uh, do that. I mean, or, that, that, that certainly is the, uh, is the promise of the, the Pfizer and the Moderna MRNA vaccines uh, shots is that you, you get some of this MRNA, it tricks your, um, it tricks your body into producing something that looks like the COVID spike. And then when you actually get the COVID spike, then you have uh, your body recognizes, oh, look out, this is COVID. I know what this is. I'm going to go attack it much in the same way that it attacks a cold or rhinovirus or the flu or anything else that your body knows about. Um, and so the, the idea that you didn't get as very, uh, very complicated symptoms, first of all, great. 
Uh, second of all, yeah, it probably was because of the shots you got. Or just lucky you. It's just like you, you, just, you, you got a weaker just, variant. You're just lucky. Yeah, uh, that's what happens when you uh, fly to Florida. All right. Okay, story number two. <laughs> Is that what happens? Yeah, that's what happened to me. <laughs> okay. Somebody cough all over me as you sat down at the convention table. All right, story number two. Plastic eating enzymes could eliminate billions of tons of landfill. An enzyme variant created by engineers and scientists at the University of Texas at Austin can break down environmental throttling plastics that, tic- that typically take centuries to degrade in landfills. And now they can do it in just matters of hours to days. Yeah, yeah I, All right. I got a question about this once he uh, talks about it. In, okay, so explain yeah. a little bit about this. This is very interesting. So, okay, yeah, so th- this is a fascinating story. So just to kind of set the framework for this, we use a lot of plastics as a society. We do. And if, if for the listeners, if you didn't know, like plastics come from oil. It's the same stuff that they pump out of the ground and we put in our cars. Uh, so, you know, it's it's oil. That's that's where plastics are derived from. And there's this particular compound that is found in almost in a lot of consumer plastics. So the bags, the Tupperwares, the disposable containers, that kind of stuff. It's polyethylene tetraphthalate or PET. And the stuff lasts forever, right? Like Oil in the ground lasts a long time. If you take it out of the ground and turn it into plastics and you throw it in a landfill, it's still sitting around for a long time. A long, long and time. Yeah, long, long time. time. <laughs> now, scientists have, have known for quite some time that there are certain enzymes in nature that actually eat oil. All right, so remember the, remember the Gulf oil spill, yeah. right? When all that oil gushed out into the Gulf? Well, in the Gulf, like there's natural oil leaks under the Gulf. So in the Gulf of Mexico in the water, there's enzymes that actually eat oil. So after a while, it gets eaten. Exxon Valdez up in Alaska, no natural oil, no natural enzymes. Oil sits around on the beach for decades. Yep. So in there's naturally occurring enzymes that will eat oil. So for a long time, engineers have been trying to figure out, okay, how do I make an enzyme that actually eats the plastic and does it well? And the folks at UT Austin they figured out how to use machine learning. So essentially they fed the computer system huge amounts of data on how the different variations of the enzymes would work against the different pet based plastics. They found the optimal solution according to their machine learning algorithms, produced the enzyme and lo and behold, the darn thing works at least according to the article that's written up in nature. Um, And it has the promise to be able to take plastic sitting around in the landfill, introduce the enzyme and the enzyme goes in there and munches around on the stuff like Pac-Man and basically spits out degraded plastic, which is then uh, just returned back into the environment. And it's not just sitting around as pet anymore. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. And they wouldn't have figured it out if we didn't have the advancements in machine learning that have come into play within the last, just the last few years the ability to take computational systems, build computers that can learn based on past data and build new algorithms and figure out new things that humans just couldn't do in uh, the level of speed that we would need to in order to produce these these new enzymes or anything else relatively to, to machine learning, et cetera. So really fascinating stuff. I hope it works because if the if these enzymes are able to eat up the pet, then uh, we you know, theoretically, we can get rid of a lot of this plastic landfill garbage, or we can actually send stuff to the recycling facility and they can just load it into a box, put the enzyme on it, and then it's gone. Um, or at least re- reduced back to the way that it should be naturally in nature before humans pumped it out of the ground and then turned it into a plastic bag. All right. So that's great. But I have a question about the, the Great Pacific Ocean landfill. Mm hmm. Uh, is this something that would potentially work in that setting? I mean, it's unclear. Uh, so they haven't, what they haven't done, at least according to the article that was in Nature, is uh, been able to show how this will work at industrial scale out in the, out in the wild. Okay. So actually at the landfill. Like they can, if you bring plastic to the UT Austin and you use the enzyme, it works. Uh, but, it, you know, what do they can use it out in the ocean? Hard to say. Uh, the other thing that, we have it that the article didn't get into, and I would imagine that that's probably next on the list is to figure out 
what does this enzyme do to other stuff out in the wild? Yeah, that was because my next question. As, as, as we've proven, Pac Man keeps on coming and eating through other stuff too, right? It's like Mimic, yeah, the movie humans, Mimic. Humans yeah. don't have a very good track record of using something to attack some other thing that we screwed up in the first place, right? Just think about all the all the cane toads that are running around down in Australia that were supposed to eat things and then now they can't. Anyway, it's there's <laughs> you know mosquito. And pick a topic, yeah, and you introduce a species to try and fix the other topic. And all of a sudden you have killer enzymes running around the wild and eating the transatlantic fiber optic cables underneath there that are also plastic based. So, yeah. You know, who knows? Here we go. Your, your internet stops working and that'd be yeah. worse than just Comcast. Uh, and, then, and, that, and, that was, and then we can't make contact with the planet Vulcan. That's right. That, that's that might be a good thing though. <laughs> that you know, we might, thing. we might have to cook a few more thousands of years before we start talking to other aliens, aliens out there. All right. Well, James, these are always great articles that we talk about. We enjoy you immensely. We thank you for joining the show and hopefully we'll get back to you in the next month or so with some great new, uh, enzyme eating, uh, type of deals or some <laughs> new, uh, some new technologies that are being used out there. For science and medicine. All right. Well, always a pleasure, gentlemen. I'm looking forward to seeing what's in this box that y'all keep talking about. All right. Well, we're going to do that Thanks, in a Mike's mesmerizing yeah, moment. We're great. excited to. All right. Well, that ends our segment, Ask the Expert with James Riddle. Up next, we have This Week in Technology. So now would be a great time for you to sit back, relax, and enjoy a little whiskey on the side. We'll see you in a few moments. Hello, my name is Arthur, and my life's work is connecting people with coffee. Story Coffee is a small batch specialty coffee company that uses technology to connect people to each product resource, which allows farmers to unlock their economic freedom. Try our medium roast founder series coffee, which is an exotic bourbon variety that is smooth, fresh, and elegant at storycoffee.com. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. Today, you can get your first bag free when you subscribe at storycoffee.com with code TECHTIME. That's S-T-O-R-I coffee.com. And now, let's look back at this week in technology. All right, June 1st, 1999, the day the music industry changed forever. No. That was the creation of the application app called Napster. That's right. Sean Fanning and Sean Parker released the file sharing service Napster. The service provided a simple way for users to copy and distribute MP3 music files. It became an instant hit, especially among college students. Just over six months later, on December 7th, 1999, the Recording Industry Association of America, the RIAA, filed a lawsuit against the service, alleging mass copyright infringements. Eventually, this lawsuit will force the shutdown of the company on September 3rd, 2002, but not before the popularity of downloading digital music is firmly entrenched in generation of Internet users. At the height of Napster's popularity, approximately 80 million users were registered on the network. In fact, it was so popular that many colleges blocked the use of Napster because of the network <laughs> congestion caused by students obtaining music using peer-to-peer -peer file sharing was so great. Just about every type of music genre was on tap in the MP3 format, originating from audio sources such as analog cassette tapes, vinyl records, CDs, and of course, unknown and bootleg copies of recordings. All was done essentially without copyright approvals, which made most of the activities illegal. Yeah, that's, that was bef that was after the time that we had to listen to the radio yeah. and press record. That was right. You remember, you remember the dubbing of you tapes? That? You ever had the two tapes? Yeah. You're listening, and then they would always talk over the intro lead to that music. I, I know. And you'd I be know. like, hey, I want to watch. really work for it. You did. You'd have to wait for that Poison song to come in and, in the second middle of the Welcome three songs. Welcome to the Cowboys. Yes, right. There you go. All right. Well, there's a little uh, Guns N' Roses for you. Uh, Mike Renee will be uh, uh, guest lighting at the... Uh, okay. Yeah, there so you talked right over. Him. Uh, this week in technology has done it, but if you've ever wanted some <laughs> Tech Time history, we have two years of videos. You can go visit techtimeradio.com to watch our older shows, sign up for our newsletter, or join our Tech Timers Facebook group to talk about all of the cool information you learn about on our show live. We're going to take a commercial break. When we return, we have the nugget of the week just around the corner. We also have Mark's Mumbles. We'll see you after the break. Hey, Mike, do you love subscription boxes as much as I do? Probably more than you do. Guess what? You're going to be absolutely obsessed then with Meet Cute Box. 
Meet Cube Box is a membership box for couples that give you a new theme date night box each month for you and your partner to enjoy. My favorite part about Meet Cute Box is the fact that all the items are from small local businesses around the world. So you really get to experience something new and different every month. Memberships start at only $29.99 per month with each box valued up to $100. If you're looking for ways to keep date nights fun and exciting as a newlywed like you, Mike, that's right. You can try Meet Cute Box completely risk-free by checking meatbox.com and use the code SUMMER20 to get 20% off your first order. But hurry, the offer expires at the end of June. So visit meetcutebox.com and use the code SUMMER20 at checkout. Couples memberships are $39.99 or single memberships for that single friend, $29.99 every month. Make sure to sign up today. You can receive your box as early as next week. And now for Mark's All right, as we're tasting the Four Roses single barrel bourbon right now, we just had a nice uh, sipping during the commercial break. Mark's Mumble says what makes Four Roses stand out in the bourbon community is that they have 10 different recipes they use when making their blended bourbon. There are two mash bills and five different yeasts. That means that they also have 10 different variations of single barrel recipes they can use for their single barrel product. Well, the standard bottling is always offered at an OBSV at 100 proof. Part of the fun of the Four Roses single barrel line is trying to hunt down and try each recipe. As a bonus, you can find each of the 10 at barrel strength. So it's kind of like a who's who guessing game in the Four Roses single barrel. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I, I kind of still split on it. I, I'm a little bit in between. I don't know if it's... I'm, I'm gonna... a little in between on okay. it. Okay. Are you? All right. Okay. Well, here we go. Well... Now we're going to move into our next subject that is going to be talking about uh, the Windows key. And Phil Hennessy, who would normally be at this time right now, and Phil's electric versus gas yeah, vehicle. Phil, man? Technology Insights returns next week. He is on a holiday vacation. What? So we have holiday. the negative information that is going to start this segment now. This is your nugget of the week. <laughs> All right. Now grab a pen and paper because I got some great information, some hidden tricks to utilize your PC commands. That's right. Tricks and some secrets that Windows doesn't normally advertise that I'm going to share with you. Now, you know, if you have an Apple computer, you always have that Apple key that's been around since day one, day two. Use the Apple key to do tons of items. Well, your Microsoft uh, produced keyboards, your Microsoft produced uh PCs, your Intel-based PCs that run the Windows system also have a Windows key. If you see that, it's kind of kind of shot in there between the Control and Alt keys. It's got a little Windows logo. We're going to talk about some of the things that that button it's, can it's do. next to my effing key. That's right. Oh, that's <laughs> funny. All right, so let's talk about number five. We've got five ways that you're going to learn something on this for Windows 10 and 11. Number five, open the secret start menu. This is called the power menu. Do you know that if you hold the Windows key and hit X, that's right, or you can right-click on the Windows icon and start menu, that brings up the power menu that allows you to use features like command prop, control panel, and task managers easier. Did you know that before, Mike? Yes. Okay, congratulations. Number four, take a screenshot on Windows 10 or 11. This is a basic one, but it's amazing how easy we forget how to take a screenshot on your laptop or desktop. If you all you got to do is hit simply the Windows key and your print screen key, and that will take a picture that will save this into your screenshots folders underneath your file pictures. Now, to capture just one part of your screen, you can hit the Windows key plus Shift plus S. So, this is a little bit complicated. This yeah, is the complicated your tool. All right. So, this is, and this loads up the snip and sketch, which allows you to drag and create a screenshot, which is saved to your clipboard. All right. Number three, open pinned items from your taskbar with keyboard shortcuts. You learned this last night. We were talking about this, right? So, this yeah, is, yeah, I was bummed out though. Well, why was that? Well, go ahead. And okay. Here we we'll go. Talk. So, if you hit, the uh, Windows key and a number key. So you can hit number one, two, three, four, five. Essentially what it'll do is it will open that corresponding program that is pinned on your taskbar. 
So if you hit the Windows key plus two, it'll open the second pinned item on your taskbar list. Yeah, that was cool. Well, what, what did you the, like about the bum, this? The bum out was that if I hit Windows 2 again, it doesn't do anything. I have to manually shut down the window. You do. It's, once it's open, <laughs> so, it doesn't relaunch the program. And then I have program. to count. And see, does it only go up to five, or does it use the whole So it, it, all the way up to, it goes all the way up to nine. Okay. So you can go all the way right. up to, up to that, nine. The other thing is I have to count to figure out which one I want. So now one, you need to move your icons two. a little closer to the left if you <laughs> want to have those take care of. Oh, That's right. Is. But could you theoretically open another window and then reopen the same window again? Uh, once the application is opened with the window number key, it so stays it like, open. Uh, no. But you can't have it pop like up. No, but we got something you for you coming up, buddy. Everything. You can But no, we got something better, though. We got something coming. This is called the boss key. The boss key. key. All right. So number two, is your screen cluttered with many open windows and you want to see your desktop instantly? Well, if you're like me, you might want to have your window instantly closing your 10 to 20 windows that you have open. Now, all you got to do is hit the windows key and D for desktop and but do bingo. Your desktop comes back to view. And then if you want to get back all those windows that you had open previously, all you got to hit is the windows key plus D. This is called the boss key. So your boss comes on in. You're taking a look at your fantasy football lineups on. All you got to do is go Windows key and D, and it looks like you're busy working on a clean yeah, desktop. I would think this would work for people with girlfriends and boyfriends, husbands and wives too. Uh, that could be. Well, I don't know. However <laughs> yes, you use it. <laughs> Whatever you want to use it for, that's good. Now we're gonna go. That was number two. We're gonna go to number one. What's the the number Windows one? key plus G. Now, this is really important. This is five apps in one. This is not just one app. Uh, this okay. is the is this, five is this for a promotional one. job. No, this is no promotional job. All right, here's so the start the Windows key plus G. This will start app recording and it has five programs. It'll have CPU performance. So, if you want to see how your CPU is performing, you can see what it's being run by. If you want to see how your apps are taking each of the RAM allocations for your PC, it shows that also. Again, this is the Windows key plus the G on your keyboard. Essentially, it opens this game Win- module. Is what Windows they're gaming. That's right. Now, do you want to, let's say you're having a Zoom meeting and no one's recording it, but your boss decides that he wants to start singing like happy birthday to somebody and he's just absolutely horrible. If you hit Windows G, it actually has a picture capture and a full screen capture. So you can capture the whole Zoom meeting even though it's not being recorded, and in an MP3 that. <laughs> file that you can then share around the office because it comes with built-in you know, you recording. Know, you know, that's illegal in some places. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> that's so what, that's why Zoom do, has that whole, this is a recording. Well, that's right. So all you got to do is hit that Windows key and G, and you can record anything on your desktop at any time. I'm but it doesn't now. notify that... They're recording? No, it does not. Oh, no, okay. it doesn't. Uh, That's horrible. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna it's, be the a... sneak, it's the sneaky record. All of a sudden, you're... Why, but, is, why is Odie writing that down? Windows key and G. All right, there you go. Okay. All right, well, hopefully those were some nuggets. Make sure you join us next week as we start part three of Phil's electric versus gas vehicles returning to our regular standard broadcast time for this. But now we need to take a commercial break. When we return, we have Mike's mesmerizing moment brought to us by Story Coffee and Pick of the Day and his box reveal for the meetcutebox.com item. We'll All see right. you after the break. Yeah. How to See a Man About a Dog. It combines darkly comic short stories, powerful poems, and pulp fiction prose to create a heartbreaking and hilarious journey readers will not soon forget. Read How to See a Man About a Dog, collected writings for free with Kindle Unlimited. Ebook available on Kindle, print copies available on Amazon the Book Depository, and more. All right, Mr. Gorday, this is your time. You have in front of you a meat cute box. I do. It's kind of like Christmas. All right, you're going to open this up. This is one of our new sponsors. Now, this is a box that you get delivered to you once a month for either couples or for single individuals. And then what what do you get when you open that? Well, there's a card. Okay. Thank you for being our member. Our goal is to send a unique items from small businesses around the world while giving you and your partner a fun new date night idea every month. Okay. And, and what's uh, your date night plan? Oh, oh, it has a date night thing. Grab your beach towel and... Fill up those fro zips with your favorite beverage. We recommend spending a sunset together. It could be at your favorite waterfront hangout or just in your backyard. Make 
Uh, maybe even take it one step further. Bring your empty meat cute box with you and use it to lock away all your devices. No, no, so no. So you can really, yeah, well, yeah. No, no, no. No, you silly, no, no. You, you, no. You, 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 can't, you can't be having no, a No, no, you still need to have your phones. What do you, you know? You can, yeah, that have to yeah, give that, undivided uh, attention. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. All right, what do you we have in your tell, meat box? We, we, we have some obvious differences in, in relationships. How long have you been married? Uh, I've been married for six months now. Six months now. Okay. Uh, I'm on that 27, 28, 29, 30, something like that. Well, I'm sure that I'm sure. a date night for you is very much different <laughs> well, than we, a we, date we, night for me. Uh, probably. All right. So what do you got in your box here? You got to go quickly now. Oh, All right. I don't know. What do uh, you got? Let's see. All right. So you got yourself uh, something to a, wipe you down a, after your- a cool cold shower Cooling field towel for cool down. And so that's when you're up. on the beach and you're hot. Afterwards, you can you can wipe yourself down. So this is two straws. You put your alcoholic beverages oh, in that. Look, you got then some, you put it in the freezer. They, these are those fro the froze froze Yeah, you got that. That's that's all right. Pretty, got some. You got some soap. Soap. I guess that's so you can go in the acres. Oh yeah, show it to the camera. Show it to the camera too. Oh, oh there yeah. you go. There you go. Other way around. Like a beauty guru. Like, oh on. yay! There you go. Yeah, beauty yeah. guru. There yeah. it is, right there. How okay. snazzy. Harbor Acres, English Road. Smells good. It smells good. All right, so you can clean yourself up after that steam. Now, did you get a towel in there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you got a steam. Oh, look There's at that. A it's, it's a handmade towel with. It looks like a little. Oh no, those things are awesome. What are these? Those are like man uh are those, those uh, bathroom bombs. Yeah, the bathroom bombs I was telling you about. So if you're gonna go in and do a man thing and you put one of those in the t- uh your toilet first, then you it know, makes this it all is... smells good. <laughs> <laughs> well you got some more stuff. Okay, you got what some is this? that's a bath bomb. That's a bath bomb. Right? You got uh, once you get in there some there? there's a lot of paper in there. Yeah, there's, there, you oh, got this, a... now this looks promising. Oh okay. uh, well. What is that? It's like those scrunchy <laughs> things that you put in like the, their hair so their hair gets pushed back. So it's a it's a little jar full of scrunchies. I think so. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Okay, there you go. Hair so that's ties? all right. So what's that? Hair ties? Are they? Uh, I don't hair know. Scrunchies. They're, they're hair scrunchies. They're called oh, okay. scrunchies. They used to pull those back in the when the girls in junior high had those on. You'd walk up to them and you go bink, and you hit them right in the back of the head. In school, remember that? Right. Uh, n- no, I, you didn't, you didn't I, do that. You know, I wasn't, the, I wasn't in the principal's office as long as many times as you were. All right, so your mesmerizing moment. How would you enjoy a date with this meat cute box? Well, I don't know. You don't know? Oh, see. Look, there's Mike's mesmerizing moments. There's mesmerizing, mesmerizing, mesmerizing moment right there. Moment. Presented by Story Coffee. Visit storycoffee.com. Well, it it all it already tells me what to do. Okay, but it's, it says, you know, there's the Beach towel, which is there. Yeah. Uh, you get your fro zips. You know, you yeah. put your beverages in there with your straws, and you yeah. go out and you enjoy the sunset. Now, you know, like one of my favorite things to do is walking on the waterfront. Okay. Uh, so this would be a great this would be a great little thing to bring with you to go to the waterfront. Um, I will refrain from thinking of the juvenile ways I could use the bath bomb and the. <laughs> And the the man stuff at the at the waterfront at the waterfront. But, yeah, but. <laughs> okay, okay. So that's your date box. But, what do you think? Are you excited about using your meat cute box? Absolutely. Oh, there you go. All right. So mesmerizing moment from Mike is that he's very uh, professional and, and mature about his bath bombs. I, I would have thrown my <laughs> bath bomb on the, into the into the water and see what happens right there. And then that, it had some that's enzymes. What I was, that that's to be what eating. I was referencing right okay. there. You know, so, you're going to be the guy that gets the enzymes and goes and throws them on the plastic just to watch the world burn. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? If we have some enzymes that can eat everything up, then then I'll be good to go. I won't get in trouble. Then. <laughs> okay. That's right, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the reason. To do All it. right. Well, let's move on now to our pick of the day. And now our pick of the day for our whiskey tastings. Let's see what bubbles to the top. All right, Mike. We have the Four Roses Single Barrel Bourbon. This is the, uh, you can drink it straight up or on the rocks. It's the 100 proof, forty nine ninety five bottle. What do you think? Uh, you know what? I, I, I didn't really like it as much as I thought I was going to like it. I, it started out really... Nice, and then I'm kind of thinking that for fifty bucks, I mean, we've had some stuff up here that's been twenty five and thirty bucks. It is just like heads over heels better than, in my opinion, the Four Roses. And I don't want to play a game of knowing which one has which flavor. So yours and is a thumb down. I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Yeah. Okay. Well, I I enjoyed it. Aside from the 
as we as I talk about all the time, I don't really like the burn, and there's a longer burn on this one than I was anticipating. Uh, but it does smooth out with a, a really good aftertaste. I'm going to give it a thumbs up. Okay, so we've got a split vote here. Now we're going to have to go to Odie behind the board. How, how do we split this? Is it a thumbs th- down? A thumbs oh. down. It's a pretty bottle, though. It is a very Why pretty bottle. Why is it bottle. a thumbs down? Because it's deceiving. I don't know. I was expecting it to feel like all nice and warm and cute. Not. No, no, that's all. the box. That's the box. That's the, <laughs> the, the, the that's the, that's on the beach. That's yeah. that's doing <laughs> stuff on the beach. That's right. Uh, with, well, with your drink glass. Actually, it like a little sweet, but no, it was just really hard and a strong taste. This might be a good mixer. That would be. That's that would be very good. All right. Well, we enjoyed our show. Hopefully, you enjoyed listening to it. Now, remember that the science of tomorrow. Starts with the technology of today. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on Tech Time Radio. We hope that you had a chance to have that hmm moment today in technology. The fun doesn't stop there. We recommend that you go to techtimeradio.com and join our fan list for the most important aspect of staying connected and winning some really great monthly prizes. We also have a few other ways to stay connected, including subscribing to our podcast on any podcast service from Apple to Google and everything in between. We're also on YouTube. So check us out on youtube.com slash tech time radio, all one word. We hope you enjoyed the show as much as we did making it for you. From all of us at Tech Time Radio, remember, mum's the word. Have a safe and fantastic week.